Hey everyone, we just had our first press conference of Eurovision 2021 and I'm here together with Sietse Bakker, the executive producer of Eurovision 2021 and we're going to ask him a few questions. Are you ready? Absolutely. Let's, Let's do, do this! <laughs> Could you briefly explain the four scenarios that you've planned out? Yeah, our first scenario is obviously a Eurovision Song Contest as, uh, as we love it, as we got to know it over the years. Uh, and, and that's what we are fully focused on to, uh, to roll out. Then we have scenario B. That's basically a social distancing song contest based on the measures that are currently in place here in the Netherlands. Uh, we still have eight months to go until the first live show, so uh, we hope that it won't be necessary, but we want to be prepared. The, uh, the third scenario, scenario C, is a scenario based on travel restrictions. Today you see that people from some countries cannot travel to other countries, and we want to be sure that we can celebrate the Eurovision Song Contest with all participating countries. So that means that this, in this scenario the participants will perform from their own countries. How exactly we're going to do that, uh, we're currently working on with the EBU. And then the last scenario is a scenario which we believe is increasingly unlikely, but that's a scenario that we faced in March of this year when we were uh, caught by, by unpleasant surprise uh, when the coronavirus hit Europe uh, and that we had to go in a, in a, in a lockdown. Uh, and again, we believe it's increasingly unlikely, but still we want to be prepared to be certain that we can have three fantastic shows and uh, a contest and a winner next year. Hopefully, and which scenario seems the most likely to you? Well, if you ask uh, what, the, what, a, what scenario we should choose uh, if the song contest would be held here today, you would end up with a combination between B and C. But obviously, with, uh, with still eight months to go until the first live show, it's impossible to say uh, what, how the world is changing. We've seen that over the last few months, that we have to live with a degree of uncertainty. But we do see that in the event industry, there is a lot of experimenting going on uh, with rapid testing. Uh, we hope that a vaccine is coming in the early months of, uh, of, of next year. Uh, so we are realistic about, uh, about all these uh, opportunities uh, that they may or may not come in time. Uh, but for the moment, uh, we, we want to be mainly optimistic. Great. We will keep the stage and the hosts of Eurovision 2020. What about the logo? Will you add uh, new countries or leave countries out of the design? Well, that's uh, the million euro question today. What, how many countries and which countries will, uh, will participate next year? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the executive supervisor, Martin Osterdal, already told us today that uh, it's looking very good. Uh, and we were obviously very happy to hear that. Uh, as you uh, may know, the, 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 the artwork is based on data of the, the colors of the flags of all participating countries. So should anything change in uh, the countries that take part, we will have to take out or maybe even add uh, a few colors. Uh, and we're also looking at ways to sort of take it to the next level because uh, we've now looked at this, uh, this artwork for a year and we want to be sure that if you have that Eurovision mug or t-shirt or, or whatever merchandise you love, uh, that you can, uh, that you, 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 will, you can have both of them uh, and that they will look different. And you've probably noticed the, the drama on Twitter the last few weeks because some of the fans saw the design of a swan. <laughs> As on the logo on the desk of one of the employees. Could you explain something about the swan? What was that? <laughs> Uh, uh, we know that you guys out there are very creative. Uh, there's a lot of people sending in uh, ideas for, for branding, uh, for visuals, for the Eurovision Song Contest. And this was one of the things that, uh, that we received uh, uh, last year. Uh, and we thought it looked uh, really nice. It's a big sort of blow up of a, uh, of, of a, of a, of a swan. Uh, so we decided to keep it uh, in our office and it was just laying there so no one really noticed it. So we, we, we were uh, uh, slightly surprised by the, uh, the amount of drama but we, we kind of had a good laugh about it. But uh, no, this is not the new logo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And the last question, what will help happen to the tickets of the fans? Are you advising them to buy tickets to, to come to the Netherlands as well? And what will happen to the tickets of Ahoy Rotterdam? Yeah, we said from the from the start uh, when we decided to uh, to have Eurovision Song Contest in 2021 uh, that everyone who managed to get their hands on those much desired tickets 
uh, that they could keep them. Uh, we also offered people a refund in case they wanted to uh, give the ticket back because, for example, they may not be available or they don't want to go next year. And we saw that a whopping 94% of the people decided to keep their tickets. So the, the, the desire to uh, attend one of the shows uh, is, is there. Uh, with the fans, with the people of Rotterdam, the people of the Netherlands who are very excited to, to host the contest after 40 years. Um, and obviously we understand that people want to you know, book their flights, want to book their hotels. So we hope to be able to, to give people an indication of which direction it's going in as early as we can. But I'm sure that the fans also understand that uh, the, the more we move up that decision, the more likely the chance that we can benefit from a vaccine or rapid testing or other new lessons that we learn to deal with the, with the coronavirus. So uh, we hope to be able to say something about that uh, uh, very early in, in 2021. Uh, but for the moment, if you book your flight, if you book your hotel, uh, do go ahead, but have a close look at the cancellation terms uh, because you just want to have that safety net. Thank you so much for having us and I can't wait to see you next time. So eager and uh, we're looking forward to welcome you and the entire uh, WeWeBlogs team here in Rotterdam and hopefully as many fans as possible. Thank, Thank you. you.